Do crises overrule constitutional rights? Let us address the argument that many have been raising lately, that the U.S. Constitution does not enshrine the right to bear arms and or the right to peacefully assemble and the right to petition the government, the right to freedom of movement, which is established by the Privileges and Immunities Clause of the Constitution, and so on during a crisis. The argument, which you may have recently encountered, that the right to bear arms, for example, can be limited, I would say violated, by the government because of this crisis seems to be ultimately based on the opinion of Justice Scalia delivered in the case of the District of Columbia versus Heller, number 07-290, which reads in part, quote, There seems to us no doubt on the basis of both text and history that the Second Amendment conferred an individual right to keep and bear arms. Of course, the right was not unlimited. Huh. Uh, where are you getting that from? Uh -huh. Just as the First Amendment's right to free speech was not. Uh -huh. Really? Where are you getting that? Fucking well, I'll tell you where he's getting it from. United States versus Williams, 553 U.S., 2008, for example. But um, I think it was back in, whew, I forget when in history it happened. But at a certain point in history, the Supreme Court ruled that even though it says freedom of speech... Not really freedom it doesn't, of speech. it's not really freedom of speech because, for example, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater unless there actually is one. You can't uh, do what is called a uh, call to action that is illegal. In other words, you can't say, go murder that guy right there because you're telling somebody to do something that is seriously illegal. And uh, the thing is this, though. They don't actually have the authority to interpret it that way. They're supposed to interpret the Constitution when things are not clear. Uh, freedom of speech is extremely clear. There's no ambiguity there. So, as soon as they rule that way, they are, in fact, invalid. When they do that, they break what Thomas Paine calls the social contract. And, to put it really simply, social contract is like this. You have rights. You already have pre-existing rights, okay? Though You're born with what he calls natural rights, okay? And, as, you know, the Founding Fathers said, and etc., the Bill of Rights doesn't prescribe rights it doesn't give you rights it doesn't grant you rights all it does is it constrains the government from violating those rights it lists them it describes them it does not prescribe or grant them that's how it goes okay exactly. part of the so the social contract quite simply is well i have the natural right to be left alone to go where i want to go to say what i want to say the right to bear arms etc However, without some sort of uh, police force or something like that, I may not be able to hold on to these rights because, let's say, my neighbors might get together and decide they're going to take my crops this yep. year and there's nothing I can do about it because they, they outpower me. You may want to uh, have something like a police force and a government that will handle something like that. That is what, again, Payne calls a social contract. They are to better protect your rights than you might be able to do so yourself. That's the contract. You get more freedom, not less freedom, by entering into that contract. As soon as one party breaks the social contract, and really the only party that can do that is the government, as soon as the government breaks that contract, it is null and void. It has no right to exist. It must be neutralized. May 15th, Hillary Clinton tweeted, Our men storming a legislature to disrupt its democratic proceedings is domestic terrorism. And cannot be tolerated. What are you going to do about it, you would-be tyrant? No, Hillary. They didn't storm that building. No. Storming is what the Muslims did to our consulate. Remember that one? Where you, Benghazi, where you let oh. all those people die? Right. Yeah, that's what storming a building <laughs> looks like. Good comeback, actually. <laughs> yeah. These actual patriots are now the traitors, because... I want maximum authority! Yes, and I... Fuck I'm, you, Hillary. I'm Fuck you. I am reminded of the meme that has these guys uh, with the guns in Michigan side by side with an image of some revolutionary American patriots mm -hmm. with their guns. And it says, if you don't have a problem with this, then you shouldn't have a problem with that because it is the same goddamn thing. If you have a problem with them carrying guns and exercising their Second Amendment rights, that makes you a tyrant. Mm -hmm. Only a tyrant, or a would-be tyrant, or somebody who sympathizes with tyrannical fucktards would think it's wrong to exercise your right. Yeah. That makes you a tyrant. If you agree with the fucking Whitmer, Hillary, or any of those fucking idiots, you're a tyrant. 
Yeah. You deserve the gallows. Yeah. Good for you. Yes, you. and I don't care if you're a Republican, no. right wing, left wing, if you're Dan Crenshaw or Nancy Pelosi, whatever. If you want to limit our Second Amendment rights or any other rights, but I'm talking right now specifically about gun rights. If you want to limit our gun rights, I'm just going to assume the reason why is because you want to do some evil things. Let's have a look at these responses to that tweet by Hillary Clinton by a JT. I don't know who this is. At no one special anyway. Wrong. Such an act is a warning to our servants, politicians, that if they break the social contract that the government is allowed to exist only as long as it upholds our civil rights and does not infringe upon our natural rights, we can and will overthrow it, and it serves as a reminder that politicians who, quote, willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws, unquote, of the U.S. can be put to death for their treason. See section 242 of title 18 here. And we'll come back to this, folks. Don't worry. You servants should be terrified of we the people. Let's have a look at this attached link by the Department of Justice. According to the Department of Justice, traitors like the ones who are going along with the unconstitutional stuff in office and in law enforcement may be put to death for violating people's constitutional rights. Not by a mob. Okay, but by the system itself. Here we have this website. This is a .gov website. This is the DOJ's website right here. Section 242 of Title 18 makes it a crime for a person acting under color of any law to willfully deprive a person of a right or privilege protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States. Down here it says this includes police officers. So in other words, the, the whole argument, police have to follow orders and then later on they sort it out. No, 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 not according to this. Do you really want to subject yourself to that sort of punishment? I don't think so. Stand the fuck down. Okay, down here it says, the offense is punishable by a range of imprisonment up to a life term or the death penalty depending upon the circumstances of the crime and the resulting injury, if any. Yeah, and how's the saying go? The tree of liberty needs to be watered from time to time with the blood of tyrants. Mm -hmm. Well, malo periculosum libertatum quam quietum servatutum, which is what Thomas Jefferson said. It's not in perfect Latin, but I think what he meant to say is that the perils of liberty rather than the quiescence of servitude. Possibly, Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. And to circle back around the Thomas Paine, government, even in its best state, is but a necessary evil. In its worst state, an intolerable one. Now, I would like, again, to acknowledge and to thank all the politicians, law enforcement out there who are refusing to go along with this unconstitutional crap, and also to thank all the people who are protesting against these lockdowns. You're the actual heroes, unlike how the paparazzi wants you to believe that the nurses and doctors are. No, you people who are standing up for your fucking rights, you're actual heroes. You know why? Because you're doing exactly what the founding fathers intended for you to do, and that makes you a fucking hero in my book. So, folks, what do you think about all this? Are you going to call the FBI on us or <laughs> whatever? No, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think we have something long here, wrong here? Yes, I am not a constitutional lawyer or anything like that. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Leave us a comment below. Please make sure you subscribe to us on BitChute because I'm intentionally at this point trying to make YouTube delete me. <laughs> okay? It would give me the satisfaction. Yes, it would, it, it would, it would prove to me that I left a sting. Uh, so <laughs> you left a little ass rash. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Uh, please, please consider donating to our subscribe star. And until next time, if there ever is one, <laughs> liberty, integrity, honor, justice, truth, love, and laughter. Raise hell!